Hello everyone, welcome to our day four session for five day question series. And um, today we are, I've chosen a topic for organic farming and my name is Hansa Nora Sama and I've done my master's in nematology in agriculture. So don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon and please share this video. Okay, moving on to the first question. Um, what, what, which of the following is allowed in organic farming? So before going to the options, one must know what organic farming is. So according to FAO, organic agriculture is a unique production management system which promotes and enhances agro-system health, including biodiversity, biological cycles, and soil biological activity and that is accomplished by using on-farm agronomic, biological and mechanical methods in exclusion of all synthetic of farm inputs. So basically organic farming is a farming system in which aims at cultivating the land and raising the crops uh, in such a way uh, that it helps in maintaining the soil health by using all the biological uh, methods as well as all the mechanical methods and there are no use of chemical fertilizers or pesticides um, to enhance the sustainable, sustainable production with the most effective eco-friendly strategies. So basically it's a natural uh, alternative for a conventional farming as it has um, a lesser de detrimental effect on the environment as well. Okay, so if, if one must ask what the theory of organic farming is, uh, so in theory, basically organic farming um, uh, is a farming system which does not uh, promote any use of any chemical fertilizers, or herbicides or pesticides or feed additives to the livestock, right? So, the next slide I have uh, jotted down few of the features of organic farming along with its advantages of organic farming. Right, so let's uh, move on to the features. The first one is right soil, uh, right soil cultivation at the right time. The second one says careful use of water resources. The third one, good animal husbandry. The fourth, using natural pesticides such as botanicals like um, neem or canola oil or turmeric powder, etc. And recycled crop waste. So basically, organic farming, they promote mostly uh, zero waste farms in such a way that you'll be using the previous, previous uh, years or previous seasons organic waste or any kitchen waste and they will, you will compost and decompose it to use it as a manure. So green manurings and legumes, as these are high in nitrogen. These are uh, these legumes and green manures are mostly those plants which has a higher um, nitrogen fixation ability in such a way that they can fix the ni uh, nitrogen and make it available for the plants to get it. The and then and the last uh, the second last one says increasing genetic diversity, right. And the last one says use of resistant crops. Moving on to the advantages of organic farming. The first one says discourages environmental expo exposure to pesticides and chemicals. Second, build healthy soil by using certain uh, tillage uh, practices as well as uh, using crop rotation or cover, uh, cover crops. They usually uh, build the make the uh, soil more porous and more healthier and it thus it helps in combating erosion okay so the fourth one says fights the effects of global warming number fifth says can support water conservation as well as water health so basically organic farming in a if you look at it in a broader term it reduces the whole environmental pollution itself be it in uh, water be it in um, air pollution or waste because a large amount of environmental uh, pollution comes from an agriculture industries or agriculture waste but in this case since we're using the agriculture waste as a manure and composting it it helps in a uh, it's more of like a recycling of the um, of the waste so there are no uh, there are more there are zero or less 
uh, agriculture waste involved in organic farming. Okay, so discourages algal bloom, and the seven one says animal um, supports animal health and welfare, and number nine encourages biodiversity. So coming back to the question, which of the following is allowed in organic farming? So the first one says synthetic fertilizers. So this is completely uh, this is wrong because it does not um, promote any use of uh, synthetic or chemical fertilizers. So uh, this uh, the second one is buffer zone. So buffer zone is basically an area between um, between a certified organic production area and a non organic land. It's usually done to prevent the um, the contamination. Okay. So suppose this is a land and there's another land all right so this is non-organic and this is certified organic land so in between we'll we will be having a buffer zone all right so this helps in um, preventing any contamination from uh, between this non-organic um, land to the certified organic land, right? So the so this is definitely right. Uh, moving on again, C pla uh, hormones so, such as plant growth regulators they are also not allowed in um, organic farming. And number D says persistent pesticides. These are completely not allowed. So the correct answer for this would be number B, which is which is um, buffer zone. All right. Uh, going on to the second question, what what is the name of the scheme to support organic endeavor? The first one says it's Param Parik Krishi Karan Yojana. Number B says Param Paragat Krishi Vikas Yojana. Number C says Prayogi Krishi Vikas Yojana. Number D says Kushal Kheti Yojana. So the correct answer from amongst this is Param Parik Krishi Vikas Yojan, this is also known as PKVY and none of these are actually present and none of these are actually a real schemes. So the correct answer for this is PKVY. So let us uh, talk uh, briefly about what PKVY is. So Param, uh, Param Paragat Krishi Vikas Yojana is actually um, is an elaborated component of a soil management SHM of a major program called the National Mission of Sustainable Agriculture, which is also known as NMSA. All right. So under this PKVY, organic farming is promoted through adoption by two methods. That is number one, by vill a village black cluster approach. And second one is participatory guarantees system, PGS certification. All right. So this um, launch in April, 2015 all right so it was launched to support and promote organic farming and so what happened here was that uh, they used the method of cluster village where around 50 uh, farmers would come together and they would form a cluster of 50 um, acres of land and they will increase the uh, go about with the um, organic farming in that particular area so I've given uh, some uh, facts on um, on P uh, this one, Paramparagat Krishi Vikas Yojana. So it was done to promote organic farming and 50 or more farmers to form a cluster of 50 acres of land to take up organic farming. Okay, the second one says every farmer gets about 20,000 per acre to, for production of and distribution of the produce. And... 10,000 clusters to be formed covering five black acre area in three years. So it was done in two. Uh, it was done in 2015. So by the year of uh, 2017, 2017 or 2018, they have this uh, aimed to make a plus uh, 10,000 clusters to form a five black acre area. So the fourth one says creation of better links to the market and certification of an organic produce. Right. So uh, other than this, there are various um, 
government schemes related to organic farming and I've jotted down a few of the schemes and projects so um, let me just read out some of the projects uh, and schemes the first one being national project on organic farming which is also known as NPOF the second uh, the second one is national mission for sustainable agriculture and the third one is horticulture mission for northeast and Himalayan states and the fourth one says national project on management of soil health and fertility and um, the fifth one Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana and the sixth one is network project on organic farming of Indian Council of Agriculture Research I, I would like to suggest you all to please please check out all of these schemes and projects the date and the year in which they were implemented on which regions they were implemented their main objectives and the features of all of these uh, schemes and projects please do check it out it will be really help in the exam as well uh, moving on to the third question national center for organic farming is located in which of the following okay uh, the options are a kochi uh, b ghaziabad c gangtok and d coimbatore so the correct answer for this is ghaziabad okay okay so let's read about what national center for organic farming is so national center for organic farming it has its headquarters in ghaziabad all right so it was it's under the ministry of agriculture and it's responsible for implementing a national project okay uh, a national project on organic farming which is also uh, known as npof so what this um, national project on organic farming it is um, continuing central sector scheme since 10th five-year plan all right so this npof is being implemented by national center for organic farming at ghaziabad and it's eight it has eight other than this it has eight regional centers that is in bangalore bhubaneswar panchkula ghaziabad imphal jabalpur nagpur and patna so i would like you all to please comment um, on the comment section uh, about their main objectives main objectives for this project as well as um, the features involved in it so moving on to question number four for this question i would like you all to please uh, comment in the comment section okay this question is related to organic st standards so let me just read out um, the question for you all uh, the question says how many years must land be treated as organic without the use of any harmful uh, um, harmful prohibited substan substances to be eligible for an organic certification so the question the answers are a 1 b 2 c 3 and d 4 so please comment uh, the answers for this question in the comment section and moving on to question number five a the label carries usda organic organic seal how much of the product must be certif must be a certified organic uh, first and foremost you need to understand what usda is usda um, it's um, united states department of agriculture okay so under this they have a certain organic standards as well um, for example for crop standards or maybe for uh, livestock standards or handling or operation standards as well so uh, since now right now we're talking about an organic product so it may be milk or um, or a crop or maybe vegetables or any wheat rice etc anything right so the question says if a label uh, carries USD or organic seal, how much of the product must be certified organic? So um, the options are A, 95%, B, 50%, C, 70%, D, 80%. So before that, so let us know what an organic is. So usually uh, when we go to the market or anywhere, you usually get the term with the organic, right? So uh, let us know what an organic is. So organic is a is a labeling term that indicates that a food or other agriculture product has been produced through an approved method so these approved methods will be an approved organic methods 
organic methods would be would include no use of fertilizers chemicals or any pesticides and no use of um, any of those plant hormones or they'll be only using all those eco-friendly methods so these uh, includes all the approved um, met uh, methods of organic farming all right so uh, moving on the organic standards so as i said earlier there are different organic st standards such as for crop standards or livestock standards or for uh, operations or handling standards so these organic standards uh, what are these these they describe the specific requirements that must be verified by by these usda accredited certifying agents before product can be labeled usda organic right Okay, so uh, uh, moving on to this. So these are some of the features that I've uh, pointed out that I've jotted down on the um, on the crop standards. And um, the first feature says, uh, soil fertility and crop nutrients will be managed through tillage and cultivation practices, crop rotations and cover crops, supplemented with animals and crop waste materials and allowed synthetic materials, All right? So the second feature is, um, crop pests, crop pest or weeds and diseases will be controlled primarily through management practices, including physical, mechanical, and biological controls. These are the three main uh, ways of controlling um, pest, weeds, and diseases in organic farming. Okay, when these physical, mechanical, and biological control methods doesn't um, is not sufficient then biological botanical or synthetic substances approved for use on the national uh, on the national list may be used so the fourth one says the third one says sorry um, operations must be organic seeds and other planting stocked when available so it means that all the seeds or the planting materials used must be organically produced right so the fourth one says the use of genetic engineering, ionizing radiation, and sewage sludge is prohibited. So none of these genetic engineering, um, all those genetically modified crops, the GM crops, uh, any of that, they are not, um, or maybe ionizing radiation or sewage sludge, they are not used in organic farming. Right, so there's another one, there's another fifth feature, um, which um, it's actually related to question number four, if you can see. So it's about the how many years must the land be treated as organic, uh, organic without the use of harmful prohibited substances to be eligible for an organic certification. So, uh, so there are a list of options here. So one of these is actually related to the fifth feature of it is uh, under crop standards, okay? So I would like you all to please comment what is the fifth, what the fifth feature is, along with the the uh, along with the answer for the fourth question. So in uh, in the same way, this product, there are two points that I want to highlight here. Uh, the first one being the product sold, labeled, or represented as organic must have at least 95% certified organic content okay uh, for example if this if i'm producing a milk then the milk should have a 95% of organic content all right and suppose if the the second option is if a products there if are if they are sold labeled or represented as made with organic must have at least 70% certified organic content. If the label says organic, then it must have 95%. If the label says made with organic, uh, then the, it must have 75% of certified organic matter. So going back to the question, if a label carries USDA organic seal, how much of the product must be certified organic? So the correct answer for this would be A, which is 95%. All right, that's all for today's session. Well, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon as well as share this video if you liked it. And um, I would request you all to please comment on the comment section for the answers that I've asked. And please, if you have any doubts or clarification, you can ask in the you can drop in the comment section. Thank you.